Hello, I'm Alan Newberry, and today we're gonna to take the knife that we forged in the previous video, and we are going to take it and grind it and drill it and make it ready for heat treating. So let's go see how that was done. The first thing I like to do is fine tune and square up the profile of the knife blade. First thing I did was kind of round off the, uh, the butt end and then went to making sure that the spine is nice and square and that I get rid of any of the scale that's on the actual profile of the knife. One thing that's worth noting is that you can change some stuff about your knife right here. It's nice to forge exactly to the shape that you want, but if after you've forged it, you see, hey, you know what, this would look better if I ground the tip down a little bit lower, then go ahead and do it. Or like in this case, the, the butt end was kind of square, so I rounded it off because I thought it would look better, so I did it. So if you have design changes to make, it's something that's totally doable at this point. The next thing that I'm gonna do is to define where the edge is on the knife and make sure it's running right down the middle. So you may have to take a little bit off on one side and a lot off on the other, and maybe a bit more off at the point. And then after that, you're set up for starting your flat grinding. And in this case, I kind of start off with a, a U60 grit belt, and that took a while. And so I switched over to a newer uh, 60 grit belt, and then life started going a whole lot better. One of those things that knife makers uh, sometimes fall into the trap of is using a belt that is too worn and what that does is makes your work get hotter faster so you burn your fingers you run the risk of ruining a temper on a knife in this case it doesn't have one yet so that's not a problem but I don't want to burn my fingers and it wastes a lot of time because you will grind and grind on it and feel like you're getting nowhere the next thing I did was try to grind flat the tangs uh, so getting rid of the scale a little bit and also just flattening it because you'll need it to be flat for uh, doing the handle scales later. I'm not going all the way down because you know sometimes in the heat treat something might go off a little bit to one side or the other so I'm, I'm not necessarily going for perfect at this point. But here we have basically got the grinding done and you can kind of see what it looks like and what we're going to do now is try to define what the handle's going to look like. So here I'm kind of showing the edge of the handle and the taper there, uh, where I think a pin would look good, and then where I think a thong hole tube would look good. I'm just doing this with a Sharpie. Uh, it'll come off during the rest of the process. And then I take some calipers, figure out how wide it is, and then divide that by two to find the center. And then I'll scratch from both sides, and that'll show me where the middle is. And then I'll use a center punch to mark where I'm going to drill, and it also gives a nice little spot for the drill to kind of index on. And so do the same thing with the thong hole tube. Find the middle of that and mark it from both sides and then put the center punch on there and then mark where I'm going to drill. I like to drill these holes that I've marked with a number 30 drill which is the size hole I like to use for a eighth inch pin. For the thong hole tube that kind of acts as a pilot hole for the larger drill which I find can be helpful for keeping everything nice and straight and centered. Also for the eighth inch pin, which is what I probably will put up front, it's the right size for the pin to actually fit in the hole. For the thong hole tube, I'm going to use three eighths of an inch tubing. So for the drill bit, I'm using a size V as in vulture because it's slightly larger than the tubing so it will fit into the hole. After that, I will chamfer the holes just a little bit which helps to eliminate stress risers to help to avoid cracks whenever you're doing heat treating and it also helps whenever you're actually putting the pin in there not to have a little burr to stop the pin from going in. At this point we are ready for heat treating. I have the blade flat ground and the edge is uh, about a dime's thickness which is pretty good for heat treating and the handle has been flattened 
Most of the scale has been removed, but not all of it, which is okay because I'm going to do more grinding after heat treating. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe so that you can follow this knife along as we heat treat it, do the final grinds and put a handle on it. And if you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comment section down below. Thank you.